Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus and welcome to Errol Ford's Ministries International. Today I want to read from the book of Exodus 20 verse 17 and it reads, You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Eternal Heavenly Father, give us interpretation of your word relevant to this 21st century, that recipients of your word, God, will be healed and delivered from this time and season that present to them trials and tribulations. This I declare and decree in that other name, but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Today we want to look at covetousness and what it does to people, how it devours humanity. We live in a time where everyone is trying to possess as much wealth, crave everything that the world can bring before us, and we really don't take time out to recognize that we came into this world as babes, empty-handed and naked. And our lifespan is within a certain frame of time. And when that time comes that we shall die, nothing of the earthly possession that we acquire or aspire to achieve in excessive amounts we can take with us. And sometimes those earthly possessions remain, those hoarded resources remain, even though you have long passed on. And it tells, it should tell you, what does it really mean to have so much? To covet it, to go excessively and try to get everything the world can offer and still you are uncomfortable. These hoarded resources, this spirit of covetousness, there's always an emptiness within you. you. You never feel satisfied. You never feel contented. And this destroys the soul. This wrecks your mentality. This brings a deficiency of the spiritual life that Christ want to give you. Your eyes are so fixated on the worldly desires and the worldly ambition that there's no time out to recognize that you're only satisfying your physical nature. You're only satisfying what the world has to present to you. And the spiritual being is being neglected. Your spiritual being that represents you, your spiritual being that keeps you alive, your spiritual being that gives you the energy to walk and to speak and to think. Your spiritual being. The spiritual being that has an obligation to seek things that is of the spirit. For example, seek Christ and pursue Christ who is of the spirit. The book of Romans said to be spiritually minded is life, but to be carnally minded is death. And one of the things that humanity seems not to understand from one generation to the next generation is that no one ever believes that they're going to die. No one seems that they're going to die. Everyone believes that they have a day put down that when they rest their head at night that tomorrow is theirs. 
And it comes a time when, when the spiritual man is neglected. It starts to resent the physical body. The physical body is craving for the physical things, but the spiritual being, the you, the life, the true you, is starting to reject the body. And that is a dangerous place to be in. Because folks don't seem to understand that the body without the spirit is dead. Let me go a little detail to you. Because folks don't understand what the spirit is, but the spirit is an invisible entity of energy and power and life that God had breathed into your nostrils. And every living breath that you take, every living word that you speak is a word that was lended to you by the Holy Spirit who given you breath. Let me define the spirit. Because Unless you get a spiritual understanding of what the spirit is and what it can do to your physical body, you would be lost all your life. You see, let's take for example when you are strongly asleep or we say soundly asleep. Some people even go as far as saying you are dead asleep. Now there are moments in your sleep where you can roll and turn and you're cognitive of that. But there are moments where you just lie there still and there's no movementation. The, the thunder can crack, you don't hear it. Someone can shake you, you don't feel them. You see, when that happens and you are dead asleep, it means that your spirit, the you, is in a different realm. Now the spirit, which is of breath or wind, goes into a spiritual place that is of spiritual nature, which is of the wind. That's why you can go to sleep healthy and wake up with a virus, a cold, the influenza. Because what happened is when your spirit leaves your body, it was cross-contaminated in the spirit world where airborne diseases are, are there. And it brings it back into your body. And instantly when you awake, you recognize, where did I caught this cold from? Where did I get this virus from? Where did I get this flu from? I have worn all the protective equipment I can get. I have used all safety precautions I can get. So I'm telling you, when God said in Romans chapter 8, to be spiritually minded is life, it means that your spirit is you. The body is just a temple. And when this temple is not well cared for, your spirit rejects your temple. And when your temple is deprived from the spirit, you are as good as dead. And that dying process goes on and on and on. So I'm now going back to covetousness. Covetousness is when you allow your spirit that should be embodied and in tune and with the Holy Spirit, with a fused relationship with the Holy Spirit. When that is lacking, then your spiritual being comes under a death trap. You're living, but you're going through a dying process. The life that was lended to you is simply aborting in a process that you can't even begin to fathom. You can't be, begin to comprehend because you are so dead in the fleshly and carnally, carnally nature is that you no longer understand what it is to be of spirit. Your spirit is what God cares for. Your spirit Lives in places when your physical body goes. Be it in hell or a safe place in heaven. You get to decide that when you are a soul. 
body and spirit, a soul. You make, you make the decision on what life you're going to live. And that covetousness of that covetous spirit is a spirit of distraction. It brings mental incapacitation. When you start to covet things and become overly ambitious, you no longer sit down and see who you are. Until it comes a time when you recognize that all the hoarded resources and every single thing that you have set out to do comes full flesh in your face. You look at everything around you and it makes no sense. So you want to crave a little bit more, but you recognize that something is missing. You have all the things in the world and you are not contented because something is missing. And if the something that is missing or the person that is missing, who is Jesus Christ, if you are not in a position to reach out to him, you are walking in a fast lane to death. You see, it's a little bit hurtful when you heard of the little sister who was so ambitious, who, who has all the education and she has so much to offer the world, but she took no time out for herself because the, the, the thought of being ambitious and grabbing and craving to be everything and to, to, to look good and look right and accurate for the world. You, you want to be so much, but are you giving yourself time to sit down and understand where I am at in my life? You can have all the things in the world, all the beautiful careers, all the beautiful money. But when you go to bed and reality hit you in your face and there's no mommy or daddy or friends. You see, your friends can't see your pain and your friends can't see your torture because you are so ambitious. You think that everyone wants to aspire to be you because you're doing this and you are doing that. But deep down in your room and when you come to a place in your life where you are one in a room and you recognize it's just myself and there's so much to do. And a part of your life is missing. You look back on your track record and there's something that you desire to have in your life for the exception of all those things that you were trying to do or that you were doing. It plays now on the mind. We are one person. And sometimes it's best to take one step at a time. Achieve one goal, then achieve another goal, and you do it step after step. But to do everything in one time is not the clear path you should take. You see, no one see the, the, the young lady who have so much to offer the world. No one saw her in a pain because in the natural eye, in the natural face of the mom and dad, in the natural eyes of her friends and her colleagues, they see a glorious, beautiful young lady who want to do the world, who want to do everything, who are giving her the world her best shot, who are giving her best to what she can offer the world, but no one is seeing beyond a shadow of a doubt. No one is experiencing the problem she has to deal with. When all the public facial appearances goes behind the curtain and it's just you in that room and hell start to break loose in your mind and you are disturbed mentally and you recognize there's no one to talk to. There's no one you want to talk to because you think you are so much. But it comes a time that that 
problems start to seize in your mind and you can't get it off and the only thing you look to do is get out of life one way or the other. And we can't live in denial because we live in a generation today who you have to tailor made concepts and precepts that best suit them. You have to gift wrap things and make it look pretty. You, you can't speak the truth because to speak the truth is to offend people. So people in this time of season would prefer live in a state of denial rather than hearing the truth. And it's the denial stage in life that brings you to a corrupt end of life. No one was there. To hear or feel her pain. She need help. But she's not the only pe person like this today. This generation needs help. This generation needs the love of God. They are missing something, but the world is so designed with beauty and fashion that they can never see what the Spirit of God is saying to them. Their families are so caught up looking at the beauty exposure and everything the world has to offer. No one takes the time out to ask, son or daughter, how are your life going today? I know you're doing so much things, but tell me, can you really manage it? There's so much you are doing. Are you getting time for yourself? What about the other part of life where you may want to start a family? Are you making preparation for that? Or you prefer to go through life before creating a family? These are questions you should sit down and speak to your children about. Or talk to your children about rather. We can't take this beautiful package that life is placing before us. And think that that's God's intentions for us. The heavens and the earth will pass away, but the word of God abideth forever. My heart goes out to the Miss USA and to her family. But it's not a mental issue. And that's the problem today. Humanity doesn't is not in a position to, to interpret what is a mental issue from what is a spiritual issue. The, the, the young lady, the Miss USA, she didn't have a mental issue. She was too brilliant for that. But she needs spiritual guidance. The kind of guidance that comes from God. And when the spiritual knowledge is injected to you, you are in a position to best balance out life. We, we teach our children to aspire to come to make greatness of yourself. And that is all well and good. It's a good thing. But in the middle of the aspiration, they need guidance. A degree doesn't make you intelligent. A degree doesn't give you knowledge. All it simply states is that you master a field or, or subject that you were studying, you make good of it. And you have graduated of it. But life is more than just a degree. Life is about understanding the circumstances that surrounds you and how you deal with those circumstances. And the, and the prudent thing to do is to have the guidance of God leading you despite of whatever you may be going through. There are many out there, young people out there, and old people too, that are in a state of denial. They are blinded at what the world has to offer. 
They are caught up in the glamour. They are, caught, they are caught up in the workforce. They want to be the best they can. They want to do everything. You are one person. Do one thing at a time. You can do many things. But you have to go in a chronological order. That best tailored to your mind and your well-being. When you fail to do that, you are placing yourself in a position to hurt yourself. There are a lot of young hurt, there are young men and young women, they are hurting. And it's sad that we have so much churches in this nation. And every time you look around, there's more problems upon problems upon problems. What is the use of the church if it's not fulfilling the purpose of God? And some church folks, they are worse off than the folks who they're trying to guide. They make belief. They look like they know God. They seem like they know God. They quote the word of God brilliantly. Elegantly spoken. Well groomed. Give a message. State of the art. You would have sworn they fall out of heaven and come to bring a message. But what is the MO? What is the action behind all of it? Is it really to bring peace and harmony to the world? Is it really to bring healing to a family? Is it there to, to help a young lady from out of prostitution or bring a young lady from off the street? Is it a word to stop men from pimping young ladies out? Is it a word to stop the gang banging? Is it a word to stop drugs, illegal drugs from penetrating communities? Do you have a system structure to deal with such? What are you doing to heal the minds of humanity in this 21st century? How then can we say we are men of God and bishops and apostles and prophets and teachers and rabbis and pastors and reverends? How can we call ourselves these words and rejecting the well-being of humanity, your own sisters and brothers in the name of Jesus? How can we then shed the word of God in its fullness? How can we sing the song of deliverance to our brothers and sisters in a strange land? You know the song by the rivers of Babylon? There we sat down. We are in a strange land. How can we sing a song in a strange land? We are in a strange season. And God has a relevant word for this time and season. God is up to date on every moment of the day. He is relevant. Get out of the old ancient preaching and preach the nourishing absolute unadulterated word of God that is relevant for this 21st century that your sons and your daughters your households and your communities and your nations will come to know Christ in spirit and in truth but my brothers and sisters or the so called proclaimed church do you really know Jesus Christ as your personal savior do you really know Jesus Christ as a spirit do you got some intimate relationship with Jesus Christ do you know him as your personal savior what are the substance God had placed in you good for if you are not utilizing it 
are you going to be just one of those in the world who are trying to get as much money as they possibly can? Lying to the, the congregation Sunday after Sunday? Is that what it's all about? Is that what it's really all about? Or are we prepared to speak the truth? Our sons and daughters, if we are a royal priesthood and a chosen generation and a peculiar kind of a person, we need to speak the unadulterated word of God. And not just speak the word of God, but let the Holy Spirit behind every word of God be spoken to the recipient. That it should take root in their bodies and in their mind and in their spirit. Brothers and sisters, we live in turbulent times. The church has a essential role to play. And there's no time where you can get back anymore and say, well, let me just plan the church for the sake of making money or looking good. It's not about you. If you're going to do the word of God, if you're going to preach the word of God, preach in sincerity. Let the word of God be the meditation of your mouth. Now, eternal almighty God, I pray that your word will bring meaning to someone's soul, someone's spirit, and deliver them, dear Lord, from the trials and tribulations, Lord. Lord, I come against every demonic spirit that seeks to destroy your sons and daughters.